What noise does the turbo make, Louis? Somewhere to put to there. Ready, Ben? About to do 130 mile an hour now. It all started working on a series in my dad's shed. I'd followed my dreams and joined the Marines, serving in Afghanistan. Defenders were always part of me. So here we are building custom machines with my awesome team in Shropshire. We are Maker. Hi guys, welcome to Maker. I'm Dave, for those of you that do not know me, and this is my workshop. And today I'm gonna to give you a walk around of what's been going on, so follow me. So today, we've been assembling this 130 chassis. For those of you that have seen previous episodes, you would have seen step by step how, you know, how we stripped the vehicle, got the vehicle in various stage, so, I think it was the last episode, the episode before, we were actually repairing this. Nicky's been busy patching in the sections and obviously retaining these original numbers, guys. So this has had a fair bit of work. It's had um, a new centre outrigger here, cracking company called YRM, and big shout out to those guys for supplying fantastic OEM parts. And we had to replace this centre cross member because it had totally rotten through. So, and you know what? Reasonably priced and they come galvanised, guys, so future-proofed. Anyway, so we've put a couple of outriggers on this car. The rear section there, the rear centre cross member that carries the A-frame was actually rotten. So we've braced that and we've also done some modifications to the ends to prevent debris actually collected in there again. So we're thinking about the future. And if you look down here, this is a fully rebuilt set of axles. And these here, guys, as you can see down here, how beautifully tight they are. So this is going together. And for those of you that are probably thinking, what are these wheels? This car is not going to be a drift 130. These are actually our new assembly wheels. And... There was a moment of madness probably about a week ago and I thought, you know what, why do we struggle? Why do we struggle climbing in these engine bays? Why don't I just get some nice 18 inch steel wheels and put some low profiles on? It makes these cars easier to move and roll in and out of the workshop. So for those of you that are struggling in workshops, do it. My next advice is we're gonna run these maybe on the dyno because we were struggling with off-road tires getting warm and gripping the dyno. So they're gonna double up as that. So what you see here, this is a fully rebuilt 300 TDI. This engine has got ported head, my stage two injectors. It's got an upgraded turbo. If you can catch your eye inside here, you'll see a nice billet wheel inside this turbo. So basically pound for pound, we're trying to get a nice upgrade. And you'll notice little things like this stainless line here. We basically want these to be future proof. So Joe at Pioneer has made these fantastic lines. So anyone who wants beautiful lines, give Joe a shout. You'll notice guys, stainless fixings, we've gone with a nice powder coated finish. And what I do as well is I clear coat everything on here to basically just give it that future proof because you'll see here guys where we have to take the material away for the gaskets. We might chip and we might, you know, knock away the powder coat. And what I don't want it to do is blister and chip away. So we've clear coated those. You see things like this, the brass bushes. We take the extra time, we've polished the bushes guys. We want these caps here. We've given this a little polish. You know, it's, it's that extra bits of detail and stainless fixing where it's possible and where sensible. And what you see here, guys, this is a fully built transmission. So this came from Tom at Winchester Gears and his fantastic team. And I don't want anyone else to use Tom, so don't go there because I want him to have time to do my stuff, okay? So leave Tom alone, maybe go to Ashcroft or someone else. But anyway, so this kit is going in, this 130, and then this is heading off to America. So for those Americans out there that want a car as crisp and as shiny as this car, Give me a shout, okay?
So what we have here, this is a rear diff. So this has come out of a 110. So this is known as a stumpy to people in the trade. This had a lot of backlash. So what we've done is we've pulled that out of the back of this 335D automatic truck here. We had this clunk, this horrible clunk, 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 and we're trying to chasing it. So what we've done is Winchester stage two transfer case change and a rear diff swap. We haven't changed the front diff. This car has only done 70,000 miles, but we find transmission systems can wear and we find if you don't get rid of that wear, everyone knows that clunk with the Defender. And if you don't get rid of the clunk, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And the only way I can explain it, guys, is imagine the leverage with a hammer. So the more leverage you have, the bigger the bang. So the bigger the gaps and the bigger the slacks you've got in your splines, the bigger the impact, the bigger the knock, and the more wear that you're actually putting on your transmission. And those of you who probably experienced it, you put your handbrake on and you get that clunk clunk when the car comes to a hold. You do not want that, guys. So come here, get your transmission sorted. Let's get it tight again, like it should have been from the factory, okay? So what we've got here is a 5.9 Cummins 12 valve. We haven't done one of these in a long time, so we thought, why not? Why don't we make a bolt-in version? So if you look down there in it, you'll notice that this is our adapter chassis and this kit is totally bolt-in. I'm planning to sell this kit eventually when we get around to making some jigs and making some other bits, but if you'll notice here, we struggled before with this engine with vibrations. It's hard for me to rock this because obviously this is a 5.9 litre and Believe me, it has some vibrations behind it, if not mounted correctly. So we've gone with some Dodge Ram 2500 engine mounts. So mounts that were designed by Mopar and, you know, built to last and built to take the pure abuse, what this engine can throw at it. So Mauro, our client from Italy, wanted the car. He asked me, he said, Dave, he wants patina. He wants to retain some originality, but we're going to fit new doors, new rear door and lots of new little bits. And I was like, Mauro, I can't retain patina, but what I can do is I can repaint this girl. So it's had a quick blow over at our friends here on the estate. And I'll tell you what, it's come up very well. So you think this car is 30 odd years old. And I'll tell you what, she's mint. The body was probably the cleanest 200 TDI I've ever seen. And you know what? I'm really impressed with how it's turned out. So the next few weeks, this car's gonna get flown back together and we're going to start the testing and you know what i can't wait to do is bolt on the nice goodies so we've got some lovely casey daylighters going on there with the lovely vintage covers uh we've got the eight point roll cage going on for safety we've got some nice sheets going in there alley sport cooling system some nice hoses you know what this car is really going to start coming together we've got a winch on its way for it so yeah marrow's definitely going to be surprised when he sees his um, finished article So thanks for watching another one of our episodes, guys. Really appreciate the feedback that you guys are giving me. And most of all, do not forget to subscribe, like, tell your friends, guys, and please share our videos. We're trying our best to make these, you know, as interesting as possible, guys. So anything you can think about, any questions, drop us a comment below and share. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>